Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Monster of the Week. I am the keeper of stories and secrets, Ooh. Kelly McLaughlin, and we're joined today by our good friends. Still Donetis playing Juniper Albright, the monstrous. And Joe O'Gorman playing Mr. Windermere, the mundane. And Mitchell Roberts. <laughs> I'm playing Keeper McKinley, the expert. And welcome back, everybody. We have our special guest with us today, Mitch, who just introduced himself. Uh, you guys might have seen Mitch in previous Monster of the Week episodes or even in one of our Untold Tales of Drakenheim one-shots that I ran. Um, Mitch, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do when you're not playing games with us? I would love to shamelessly plug off the top. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, myself, um, Joe, and actually hey. Kyle from the Dungeon Dudes channel as well, who you might recognize as this guy. Uh, we have our own gaming channel, Quarter Life Gaming, uh, that we stream on Twitch every Monday at 8 p.m. Uh, so come check us out. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel um, that you can subscribe to. Um, for our Twitch, we have um, gaming every week. We also have a Discord that you can come join. Uh, you can find the link to that on our YouTube, Quarter Life Gaming, or we actually have a website. What? QuarterLifeGaming.com, uh, where you can find the links to our Twitch, Instagram, Discord. Um, come join the Discord. There are tons of super nice uh, people who love gaming. You can jump into a game room with random people and, and just have a good time. Uh, we're having community game nights the last Sunday of every month. So we have this Sunday coming up at 7 p.m., our uh, first community game night of the year. So it would be great to see everybody there. Feel free to join the Discord and talk to people and Hang out. find a game to play. I think we're going to be playing, you know, some people might be playing Left 4 Dead. I know I'm going to be um, running some Jackbox Party Pack games. So yeah, come join and game with us. Thanks, Thank you, Kelly. Mitch. Please. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, Thanks. and it's just more of our little community of friends and all the gaming and fun that we like to have. So make sure to jump in on that. If you are tuning in for the first time tonight, uh, this may be a little bit different than what you were expecting. Uh, Monty is working on his thesis. He is working very, very hard. He has had a tough month of getting that finished. He needs it done by the end of the month. So we're giving him a little bit of time off. And um, I occasionally run things on this channel as well, but I am a big fan of running non-D&D games and exploring new content. And one of my favorite game systems, which is what we are playing tonight, and if you tuned in last week, is Monster of the Week. If you're unfamiliar with this game system, it is it uses the uh, Powered by the Apocalypse system. It's 2d6. It's very rules light. This is the entire rule book. There's only this and I think one other book that's back there somewhere. Um, but it's a much more rules light game, which focuses more on storytelling and role play and improv. Uh, the way that this game works is that there are certain dice rolls I can ask for from my players and they roll 2d6. And if they succeed, which is usually a 10 or higher, then good things happen. If they get a seven to nine, then usually they succeed, but I get to throw something else at them to make it difficult. And if they get a six or under, then I get to make terrible things happen to them. And this is a game based, like the name implies, on some famous horror tropes, um, specifically designed after shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Supernatural, X-Files, those sort of episodic monster hunt shows. Um, I like to run it more like small movies, so I'm definitely drawing tropes from uh, horror movies. And this is part two of our series called The Woods Are Lovely, Dark, and Deep. Yeah. And so just before we jump in, a little recap for all of you. We have our three player characters here. And when we last left them, we are in this small town 
of Pine Ridge, Ontario. It is a northern Ontario town uh, in the mid-January during the winter. All three of these folk are residents of the town and have been living there for some time. Um, would you guys like to just give a quick description of your characters to recap for everybody? Sure. Uh, Jill, why don't you go first? Jill, you're muted, I believe. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> so, Juniper Albright, uh, she is uh, the male woman postal worker uh, that goes around the town, knows a lot of the folks, volunteers, likes to bring joy because secretly she's actually a fairy. And that is her job is to bring joy to the town. So that way the uh, winter queen can gain access to the area. Yes, so she's and helping with that. there were a few issues as uh, the murders happening in the town seem to not be doing very much good for the joy. Uh, and you've had your friend Fidget. Uh, he's kind of your, um, I don't know the word I want to use here, like the messenger between the Winter Queen and her uh, joy distributors. Mm -hmm. And um, he likes to pop by just to let you know how bad of a job you're doing. Uh, next, we have Joe's character. Joe, t go ahead. Mr. Windermere is a, a staple of the community as the board landlord, um, owning many establishments, uh, including the uh, luxurious estates uh, on the mountainside. And as his uh, regular help has fallen ill, uh, he has taken a <laughs> fallen <laughs> old Ill. man, yeah. old man. Uh, what's his name? Old man. Oh, Bill. Old Bill, old old Bill Freeman, um, yeah, can't keep up with his duties anymore. And Mister Mister Windermere is <clears throat> curious and bored and has nothing better to do. And he's a little drunk, so uh, he decides to uh, pitch in when he can and uh, gets caught up in quite the night, uh, if if he uh, if he may say so. Awesome. And yes, uh, one of your great establishments that you rent out uh, seems to be a growing liability issue as there are currently six kids trapped up there uh, during this attack that we will describe in a, in a moment. Um, lastly, we have Mitch. Tell us a little bit about your character. Yeah, my character's name is Kiefer McKinley. I work at a video rental store uh, that is somehow still open which is really just a, uh, you know, kind of an error. I just get my paycheck, so I I'm staying. But I just spend my time watching movies. And uh, basically, I've been stuck in this small town my entire life and using movies as escapism to try to, you know, have adventures in the mind, so to speak. And as soon as I see the chance to go on a real adventure and, and potentially save the town, I, uh, I gather up all my mall ninja stuff and I try to tackle it with the help of my friends, well, friend and, uh, and landlord. <laughs> so, so when we, uh, when we left our three characters, uh, uh, Keith witnessed an incident just outside of his video store when a deer was dragged into the woods by some creature. He then called up Junie and got them all together. Mr. Windermere, who was um, going to see what was going on at his estate, was ended up being in the same place at the same time with his assistant, Charlotte, who left for the night and was promptly attacked. The three of them investigated the attack. They found Charlotte's body Um and they still have her severed arm in a golf bag uh, yes, on Keith's back. Um, so with Charlotte being attacked, <laughs> they encountered a strange creature. It was humanoid in appearance, but with emaciated features, long gangly arms and legs, claws on its hands, yellowing teeth and eyes. And its skin was stretched tightly across it and leathery. And it attacked them. They managed to shoot it twice and fend it off after they also called the, uh, the local um, ranger who showed up to investigate. 
and thought that they were perhaps the murderers until the creature showed up again, killed the ranger, and dragged him off into the woods, not to be seen again. So more murders on your hands as you continue to investigate. You went around town, you went to the local library to look up information, finding out that um, 70 to 80 years ago, there was a similar incident in this town when a group of an excavation team was trying to excavate the old mine and something happened. You then... Uh, Mr. Windermere decided that he was bored of the library and left and met up with James Rock, the local gym enthusiast. Uh, J James Rock offered uh, was offered $200 by Mr. Windermere to drive him up the street. So he did. Um, upon hearing that there were children in danger, James decided that he would help out further, being convinced by Mr. Windermere, grabbing his baseball bat and toolkit, they got an old tram up and running, where they were trying to head up the mountain to the estate. Halfway across, the tram was powered down, and the storm picked up. Junie and Keefe, who were talking to the lone survivor of the incident that happened almost 80 years ago, uh, got some key information about what they were dealing with. And Junie, hearing that Mr. Windermere was in danger, revealed her true self by teleporting her and Keefe into the tram with Mr. Windermere. Just as this happened, they witnessed as a creature... The same creature that they seemingly shot in the woods is crawling along the line towards them. Mr. Windermere attempted to take a good shot at it, but missed and hit the wire, um, which has caused a lot of problems. <laughs> and not important. Not important. <laughs> um, and the last thing that we saw before we closed off for the evening last week was that there was an even bigger creature on the other side of the tram near the estate, which still has a flicker of light from inside. This bigger creature stood almost as tall as the estate itself, with six-foot-long legs, long gangly arms with large claws. Its head has a bony snout and two dark holes for eyes. And in the pits of those black holes, through the whiteout and snow as the storm picks up, you can only catch glimpses, almost like a silhouette amongst a snowstorm. But you can make out these two orange glows coming from inside those eyes as it looks over at you, with these large antlers coming off of its head. As it lets out a howl that sounds like the combination of animal, human, but also the sound of blowing wind on a cold winter evening. And it all blends together as the power in the town below goes out and a chorus of howls from all around the town sound forth. We now move in to our characters trapped on the tram as we start our adventure. He he heroes. Heroes trapped on the tram. Um, yes, as we zoom into our heroes trapped on the tram, the creature crawling along the line towards you, James looks rather concerned, especially having seen, um, Junie just pop up next to him. And he, uh, just to describe James a little bit further, James has just come from work. He's wearing a tracksuit. It's just like a black tracksuit with a white stripe on it. And he's uh, he's got a, a very short haircut, like basically buzzed, but still holding that like small line of hair. Um, and he's got like very, very uh, sharp features, very thick eyebrows, um, chiseled jaw. Um, and he's, he's built pretty big he, he looks like he's i mean he goes to the gym every single day and he looks like he does um he's got darker skin and he's wearing his baseball bat strapped to his back he's um he's not wearing much else other than track 
a tracksuit and some running shoes, which is kind of rough for the sudden snowstorm that he finds himself stuck in. And he has his toolbox that Mr. Windermere asked him to bring that he got out of his trunk on his side with a strap over his shoulder, which is actually what's holding his baseball bat in place. And he looks to you guys and he and he says, dude, what the heck is going on here? There, there, what, what is that thing? What, J- Junie, where did you come from? Were you, what, somebody needs to explain what's going on here. We were here the whole time. You just didn't see us. Right, Keith? <laughs> oh, God. If you say so, Junie, I'm feeling a little sick. Are you? Are you? Mm-hmm. No, I, we, we drove up here. We, we got the tram car up and running. Bros, I, okay. I don't understand. I, you, Don't you, worry about the details, man. We're here to help, okay? Help with what? What is that thing? It's coming for us. Okay, well, I don't know exactly don't what it is. Evil. Evil. It is pure evil. Brace yourself, James. Uh, okay. Well, what are we going to do, Mr. Windy? I, we're reloading. stuck out here. I'm reloading my uh, my hunting rifle. The creature slinks along the wire. The snow is picking up. The tram is rocking in the wind as these howls echo out. And James starts looking around in a panic. He's He, he opens up his toolbox and starts looking to see what he's got in there. Um, he pulls out his baseball bat. Um, and he pulls out a box of nails and a hammer and he starts hammering the nails into the bat. And he's like, if we're going to be fighting monsters, I'm going to need something more, more, more severe than a baseball bat. You know what they say? No risk, no gain. And he starts hammering <laughs> in the nails. That classic saying. Efer, yes. get this tram going. Okay. We need uh, to save those kids. Listen. Uh, before you start bossing me around again. Junie and I did a little digging, you know, research, instead of just going into deeper trouble, like you keep bringing us. Anyway, the lone survivor of the last time this happened to the town got away, he thinks, because he was carrying a torch. So I'm... I'm just guessing it's either light or specifically fire that we need just to at least get us out of here right now. Don't talk the talk, Kiefer. Walk the walk. Well, luckily, I come prepared. (laughs) And I'm going to use preparedness. And from my Mall Ninja backpack, I'm going to take out a torch and a lighter. Roll to see if you have it. Um, okay. And what is that? <laughs> oh, preparedness is sharp. So. 14, baby! <laughs> you pull out a torch just as the creature on the wire leaps and, like, clings to the edge of the tram. And so I have it on fire now? You Back, l- you beast! Back! The creature actually recoils a bit from the torch and starts hissing at you. Ah, hiss right back at you, bud! And I'm gonna try to, like, stab it with the fire. Roll, and... kick some ass. Yes! Yeah! Okay. Uh, and... <laughs> a 12! Wonderful! Um... So you can either you can either gain the advantage and take one forward. Oh wait. Um, can I also use precise strike? Yeah. What does that do? Tell us about it. You got it. Precise strike is one of my expert moves. Nice. And when I inflict harm on a monster, you can aim for a weak spot. I roll tough, and on a ten plus, I inflict plus two harm. On a seven to nine, I inflict plus one harm. On a miss, I leave myself open to the monster. All right, roll it. Okay. And we're going to say the torch does two harm regularly. Nice, nice. 
all my high rolls are leading to this where I roll super low. Uh, no, that wasn't so bad. Uh, I, that was a 10. So that's going to be plus two harm, and you hit it in a weak spot. Now, because you rolled 10, higher than 10 on your kick some ass roll, you can either take plus one forward, or you can add an, an additional harm, or you can suffer less harm, because this thing is going to get a swing at you as well, or you can force the creature where you want it. I will force the creature where I want it. And can that be as broad as the hell away from us? Uh, <laughs> you know what? Okay, so... Drive it back. <laughs> this is the... This is the creature that you had already shot twice, so it had already taken a lot of damage. You plunge the lit uh, torch into the creature's face, and you see it start to burn away its flesh, and it screams, and it rakes its claws across you, doing one harm to you. Yep. But in the process, so it claws you across and it knocks the torch across the tram. Now the tram has oh, no. two two open doorways on it. So it's it's mostly an enca- enclosed, but there's two open doorways, one on either side. The torch slides across and is teetering. You take one harm, but the monster in slashing you, grabbing its face in pain, tumbles off the tram and falls into the snowy abyss below. You guys are about 300 feet off of what you think the ground is, but you can't even make it out anymore. Oh my gosh. And you just see it disappear into the snow below. The torch is teetering. Um, You're on the other side of the tram. Junie, Mr. Windermere, what do you two do? I am going to dive for the torch. Like, full on. Doesn't even matter if I go out of the <laughs> tram. Um, roll, act under pressure. Oh, okay. By the way, I'm rolling digital dice right now. Nine? Nine. All right. Um, you slide across the floor, grab the torch, and tumble out of the tram car. Wait, can I help? And grab the ledge. Oh, okay. Um, What do you do? Fly back into the tram. (laughs) All right, so... I can fly. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So as she tumbles out... No big deal. There's a moment everybody sees Junie just grab the torch and fall out of the tram. No. And then all of a sudden, on glistening fairy-like wings, she floats back into the tram car. I saved the torch! I'm gonna, like, sniff my inner jacket, like... No, I didn't... A big juniper! I haven't recently. Well, I, I guess I'm less surprised. Because you did just teleport me here. I mean, it was an illusion. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're taking Stop forward. your magic. Thank you. Witch. <laughs> Witch. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so there's, there's this uh, James is standing there with his baseball bat and he looks at you, Junie, and he's like, what are you? What are you? you? Yeah, that's what I was asking. (laughs) We must all know. Well, the jig is up. Um, Guys, I'm a, well, I'm a, I'm a fairy. What? I only put my hat up after all these years. Um, yeah, I mean, so, like, are we talking tooth, like, flying pixie dust, or... Yeah, a little bit of pixie dust. More like, um, bringing joy, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's, 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 uh, ooh, yeah. you bet this is going to be hard. Um, I am not from around here. I'm not from around here, guys. 
I'm where... sorry. What? We just... We just burned a monster out of the tram car, dude. And now you're flying and teleporting. Um, what? Yeah, I, I... I was sent here to bring joy to the town! As you say that, you hear more howls coming closer to you and you see again that creature is still watching you from near the estate and there's still the flicker of light and you can see a figure inside the estate house moving frantically but also back near the tram the tram station that you left you see yet another creature coming towards the tram car and this one at first, it, right now it's hard to make out, but it looks like it's wearing much more clothes than the last one. And the howls are getting closer to you. And there's several that are happening. You, you're starting to hear more howls down below as well near the town. Whatever you guys are going to do, you need to act quickly. And James is looking through his toolbox he's pulled out a piece of rope and he's like looking up he's trying to figure out how to get across you guys are about 20 feet from the end of the tram car oh so it's or from the end of the tram the tram uh line so there's a 20 foot gap between the tram car and the cliffs that you are trying to reach and does James have rope? Uh, yeah, I got some rope in my toolbox. It's not much. What, do you, do you, I don't know, bro. What do you want to do with this? Uh, I can whip. I can take out like my grappling hook. Well, what I, I'm I'm prepared, so I can at least check to see if I have a grappling hook. That we Go can for tie it. To the end of the rope. Um, and Did you bring your cool grappling hook? Let's find out. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I got what did a you... two. Where is it? Uh, you remember that it's hanging on your wall uh, with all your other stuff uh, that you have right in here. Your... Yeah. <laughs> Son of a gun. <sighs> Juniper, I do not know what you are, but... I'm a fairy. I thought I said that already. Yes, but I still cannot comprehend what's happening. Um, Mr. Windermere, I can at least tell you that I, I can vouch for her. She's done nothing but try to make this town happy and saved your life now. No, that was you. You stabbed the creature with fire and I, I brought it. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. Look, we have no time. Juniper, save us. Uh, okay. I got an idea. Uh, well, uh, how about I take this rope and I... How long is the rope? Um... He he unfurls it and it's uh, it's thirty feet of rope. It's a good D and D length. To, <laughs> to the tram and one to the end, and you guys can crawl across, and I can try to catch anyone if they fall because I can fly. Amazing! I'll Perfect. tie the one end to the tram. All right, and I fly it across to the other side. Is there somewhere for me to tie it on? There is, because there is another tram station there. So there's lots of like metal beams, wooden structure, other things like that that you could easily find somewhere to tie it off. Amazing. So I I'm gonna it off. I'm gonna head to the back of the tram car and I'm gonna I'll kill this one and um quickly onto the rope and I'm gonna shoot at the creature coming behind us. Alright, give me a kick some ass roll. Ooh, I get an eleven. Alright. Um so you get to choose an additional effect, either plus one forward, inflict terrible harm suffer less harm or you force them where you want them uh so i finally finished reloading i cocked my gun take this you fiend and uh i i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna take advantage uh take plus one forward and um so your next gonna... roll that you do you're gonna have an additional plus one to whatever that roll is nice and so and then I, i'm gonna take a shot and it's gonna take three harm uh, you see the creature was just starting to climb up onto the wire and you shoot it and it kind of flies off back onto the ground and rolls um, out of view in the snowy haze, um, giving you an opening to escape. 
quickly now. Terrific. So you have the the wire that the tram car is on, and now a rope. So you could technically like hold the the wire and shimmy, try to shimmy across the rope. It's nice. three hundred feet above the rocky ground below. It's uh, it's going to be sketchy. But James, um, James goes first, and he's like, "All right, bros, let's go." And he starts shimmying across. I'm kind of there as like a spotter too. Nice. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, dude. Safety first. You know. you know, that's what we always say at the gym. Safety first. No, no, um, no risk, no gain, you know? Um, so no shimming. Accident. Yeah. Um, who's going next? Before I go, can I see if I have the cardboard cutouts of Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus in my preparedness pack? <laughs> go for it. All right, I'm gonna, I, I better double all check. All three of them, too? All yeah. Three. It's, it's, it's a package deal. It's, 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 a, it's a, one of those triple card boards. Um, and so that... Sorry, what do I roll for preparedness? Sharp? Yeah, so I got a nine. A nine. All right. Uh, with preparedness, what does it say under... Uh, I think it just says... Um, you have it, but not here. It will take some time to get. <laughs> where, where, what are you looking for? Keep Sorry, you, I was trying to create a distraction. As you rifle around, you find a note from Nate that says, hey man, thanks for the cardboard cutout of the Matrix. I put it up in the convenience store. It's rad. Forget it. Don't worry about it. Just trying to stall them a little bit. Let's do this. All right. Um, Keith, as you shimmy across, give me a act under pressure roll. <laughs> oh, uh, you made it. <laughs> I made it. Um, and act under pressure. And because I've read about this sort of thing, I'm going to roll sharp for that. Um, cool. I read about how to traverse these ropes all the time on the treetop adventure uh, website and that is eight plus two so ten ten all right so as you're shimming across you're you're doing great uh you've made it about halfway mr windermere what's up i uh throw my rifle on my back uh and follow suit give me an act under pressure roll mr windermere and you get a plus one bonus because of your oh it's gonna need it uh i get an eight all right. As you step onto the rope, your footing is okay, but you kind of step on and you give it a little bounce and it's going to cause Keith to make another act under pressure roll. Don't worry about what actually happened in my apartment. <laughs> okay. Uh, act under pressure. Uh... Five. Keith slips. <gasps> and as he slips, James reaches out and grabs him. <gasps> and his feet slip off as well. And now James is hanging there, holding Keith by the hand. And his grip is slipping. Junie? <laughs> what are you going to do? I want to grab Keeper by the waist and try to like fly him back up. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make that a um a protect someone roll. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's tough. Okay. Seven, Judy. <laughs> On a seven. Plus, you protect them okay, but you'll suffer some or all of the harm they were going to get. So, Keith actually falls. He 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 slips out of James's hand, and you grab him, and you swing him back up to the rope. Um, but in doing so, it strains your arm and actually pulls it out of its socket from the sudden fall, and you are going to suffer... One harm. And 
your arm is now incapacitated and James is still struggling to find his footing. He's still hanging there. I, uh, I begin to shimmy further and I'm going to try to steady James, um, the best I can over top of, uh, Kiefer. Give me a help out roll. It is cool. Uh, I get a 10. Mm. Um, I'm going to allow that. I'm going to say that, that you, you managed to get him back on his footing and the three of you continue to shimmy across. Not in a strength way, more like, like I just like help him get his balance and yeah. he uses his muscles. You like, you, you basically like grab him and stop him from swaying and he's able yeah. to. And I steadied my own rope. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just not as spry as I used to be. You guys get to the other end just as you see the creature slinking back across with the uh, tram swaying, but it's going to take it time to get across. The larger creature that you saw in the snow seems to have disappeared. The snowstorm is so thick that you can barely make out the estate other than the flickering glow coming from a window in the distance, but it's, it's so snowy out now that... If the creature's still nearby, you're not sure. I rush towards the the estate. This way! And I charge in. Is, can I see the door? As you get closer, you do make out the door on the estate. But Keith and Junie, you no longer see. Mr. Windermere just disappears into the snowy, whiteout conditions. All for him. Mr. Windermere! There's a howl that echoes as you think, Mr. Windermere, you might hear Junie. But you're not sure. Does this count as uh, whenever I go off by myself? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I mark experience. Juniper, use your ears. Hear my voice. <laughs> <laughs> your fairy voice, hear me! <laughs> hear my normal voice with your fairy ears! Uh, Mr. Windermere, you make it to the door of the estate. And I... I try to open it. The door is open. As oh. as it swings open from the wind outside... Was easy. There is a sound of a gunshot... And I want you to make an act under pressure roll. Um, so I want to use, uh, if I can, what could go wrong. Uh, whenever you charge into immediate danger without hedging your bets, hold two. Okay. Um, so I get a, this is a act under pressure. Yeah. I get a nine. All right. Um, what does your hold to give you? Okay, so I can I can take two forward on my act under pressure roll, or I could reduce the harm suffered by one, or I could inflict harm. But I assume I'm yeah. <laughs> take that um, gun. <laughs> if you, I mean, if you increase it by two, then it's going to be. Uh, I'll make it. Uh, I'll make it an eleven. Yeah. Um, the shotgun blast blows out part of the door frame next to you, and. It explodes past your head and you look up and you see two teenagers standing there. One of them has a shotgun that you actually recognize is supposed to be hanging. It's like a decorative shotgun, although you do keep it loaded in case you want to go hunting. Um, <laughs> that you keep <laughs> above the fireplace. <laughs> you didn't think anybody who stayed here would actually take the shotgun down and try it. Um, but what you walk into is the... the the girl holding the shotgun, uh, she's about 18 or 19, Asian girl with long black hair. Um, she's wearing a winter jacket pulled up over her head. It's it's quite cold in here, but you do see a, a fire going in the large fireplace. Um, she's holding the shotgun. She's wearing pajama pants and bunny slippers. And she looks at you and is and just goes, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I thought you were one of them. And 
sitting on the couch behind her looking terrified and huddled kind of in a ball is is a, a teenage boy um he has long kind of uh, shaggy brown hair he's wearing a roots hoodie and jogging pants and he is carrying the fire poker in his hand and he kind of pokes up over the the couch and he's like is that the dude that we rented the 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 estate off of you young man i'm keeping your deposit uh, <laughs> after this nonsense Grab a flashlight. You're coming with me. I have friends out there. Where are the flashlights? We didn't bring any. Look under the kitchen sink, probably. Is um, where old man Bill would have put them. Uh, the the girl goes and looks under the sink. And she looks back up and is like, there, there's nothing here. As a matter of uh, fact, we came in here. and there, You don't keep this place very well stocked. I th- it said in your it said on the website that you were going to have food and supplies and like all the fixings you could it, we came it was empty and then the power went out and nobody came to check on us the deposits will be negotiated and They're- please consider this in your review now grab some <laughs> fire young man and help me fight away find my friends they are stuck in the snowstorm the girl cocks the shotgun again and it's like, you listen here, sir. There, there are creatures out there. But there were six of us this morning. We went for a walk in the woods. We, we found something and, and something came after us. And, and, and my friends, it's just me and Mark left. Uh, I don't know what happened to them. And at that moment, you hear more howls. Meanwhile... Outside, trudging through the snow towards the estate, Junie, Keith, how's it going? Junie, how's your arm? Bad, bad. Uh, I need some time to heal myself. You think you can make it to the cabin? Uh, yeah, just I'm not very steady. I just don't go too fast, or else I don't want to lose you too. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick by her. Uh, I'm not going to leave your side, Junie. I'm going to take out my torch again. Uh, I'm going to reignite it, um, hoping that it'll shed some light through this snowstorm as well as ward away monsters. As you light the torch, it is getting quite dark out, and you, you light it, and as you hold it up, you see two sets of eyes on either side of you that disappear back into the snow and recoil from the light. Um, Junie, I'm sorry. We we gotta hurry up. Can can you can you fly? Uh, yeah. And I kind of float a foot in the air with my feet out of the snow. One of your wings is not working as well. It's kind of attached to the dislocated shoulder. Um, so you're you're trying to fly, but it's going a little slower. It's just as bad as my walking at this point. Uh, can I give her a piggyback? Uh, yeah. Okay, can you hold on this torch and I'll give you a piggyback? Yes, I hold it with my one good arm. <laughs> you you can make out these creatures just on the perimeter of your light source. And through the snow, you just see glimpses of their silhouettes as they circle. But you catch a glimpse, Junie, of one of them as the snow clears for just a brief second. It looks the same as the creature that you met in the woods, but this one is wearing the ranger's outfit. Uh, oh, uh, Keith, I think I think it's Ranger Roger. Ranger. Okay. Oh, little sticks. Oh, All right. No. Here, Ranger Roger, you drop this. I'm gonna take out his revolver, and I'm gonna shoot him in the head. You fire at the creature. Give me a kick some ass roll. All right. Uh, Seven. Seven. 
All right. Um, so you and whatever you're fighting inflict harm on each other. Uh, what What is the harm level of your gun? Uh, that was the revolver he dropped. It's but... the same as your... your uh... Uh, then it is three. All right. So you shoot it and it lunges forward. And instead of attacking you... It knocks, it, it jumps up and actually goes for Junie. The arm that she's holding the torch in. Son of a... And it knocks the torch out of her hand. And the torch flings across and lands in the snow, which puts it out. And you hear two howls happen. What do you do in response? The door, you can actually make out the door. It's only about 10 feet away from you. I want to yell at Kiefer. I'm like, Kiefer, go! And, and um, I want to use my magic to, like, blast light out of my hand. All right. I'm just booking it. <laughs> Give me a use magic roll, Junie, as Keith books it carrying Junie towards the door of the estate. <laughs> I got a nine. All right. Um, so I get to choose a glitch. As you blast it, so you use your bad arm because the other arm just had the torch knocked out of it. It, You blast a beam of light and you see the creatures that were just about to lunge for you recoil. But in the process, you strain yourself and you take another harm. Oh, no. And Keith, you burst through the door. <laughs> We're here. Uh, the, the girl swings with the shotgun and points it and realizes you're not monsters and yells, close the door. I close it with my foot and I put Junie down. You got any carbonated water? Uh, the flyer said there would be a soda stream, but the tank was empty when we got here. Where's James? Uh, <laughs> James! <laughs> I thought he was with you. Where is James? I don't know. We lost him in the snow. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's at uh, the... one down. Bless him. No, we will find him. Get your tend to your arm, Juniper, and um, you boy. And I point at Mark. Um, bring that fire with with you. And um, he, I think he has a uh, he has the fire poker, right? Yeah. But it's not like hot or anything. So I, I, I want to grab like one of the logs from the, from the fire. All and, right. Like, reach in and I want to try to grab one of like, like try to grab one of the end ones with some burning on the end. You manage to find one that uh, that suits your needs. It's not quite as good as a torch. It's like a slightly burning log. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of awkward to carry. Um, but yeah, you you start to hear howls outside. And I'm gonna rush to the door and uh, take a look outside, and I'm I'm gonna call out for James. James, James. There's a brief moment of silence, and all of a sudden, something jumps at you. What do you do? I throw the fire log at it. <laughs> <laughs> give me um give me a kick some ass. Um here I, I reroll. Dropped one of them. Ooh, I get a seven. I get a seven. Alright. The log makes contact with the figure jumping towards you. And as it hits them in the head, they fall over on the ground and you realize it's James. <laughs> <laughs> and he holds his head. He's like, "Did you, 
Mr. W, did you just throw a burning log at my head? Dude. I want to use my I want to use my my what could go wrong, my hold to uh I want to reduce the harm suffered by one. <laughs> he takes no harm. Uh it it just kind of hits him and he kind of catches it and kind of falls over and like throws it off of him back towards you. Stands up and is like we need to get inside and he shoves yes! you back in. <laughs> Brace the door, James. Use your muscles. Uh, he braces the door and he's like, guys, there's something out there. And just then the door starts to shake as he holds it closed. Junie, it seemed like that light from your hands repelled them. I, I don't know if it's fire or if it's if it's just light, but I, I think we need we need some light. Yeah, I agree. And with that, I'm going to look in my mall ninja pack and find my uh, prop police light, spinning light thing. Um, so I'm going to reach in for that. Please, please tell me I packed this. Um, and preparedness is sharp. That's okay, Kelly? Yeah. Okay. Then I get a 12. Whoa! Uh, you pull out a prop police light. Um, wh what do you do with it? Is there any duct tape in this place? Um, yes. Okay, I'm gonna put it on my head and I go. <laughs> and it's it's battery powered. I'm gonna click, and so now I just have on my head. As the light starts going around, it it's it's just a red light that's causing this almost like strobe effect in the room of red against the flicker of the fire. And as this strobing red light occurs, you turn and there's um there's a back deck to the um to the estate with sliding doors. And you can make out one of the creatures slinking past the sliding doors while James still holds the door closed. Um, the girl who uh, you haven't asked her name yet, but uh, who's holding the shotgun uh, turns to you and is like, did you come to get us out of here or what are we doing? We've come to save you. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Uh, what are those things outside, and what is it that attacked my friends? I need answers. Not now, young woman. We need to make sure we don't die. And uh, cover the back door. You have a gun, and you know how to use it. She. And I want to manipulate someone. Go for it. Uh, Ten. All right, they'll do it for the reason you gave them. Uh, she says, all right, I'll watch the back door, but somebody better figure out a way to get us out of here. Um, you hear more howls coming from distant, not the ones directly near you, but down the mountain in the town. I want to think for a second. The estate. Mm-hmm. Did I have the foresight to put in backup generators? Uh, you did. I'm going to go try to turn them on. They are in the cellar. Mm. Which, um, it's an old estate. And so you never, there was never actually an entrance on the inside. The cellar is one of those flip open cellar doors just outside the back. Mm. Is that where I, cause I, you know, you don't want to run a generator inside. So does it have like a, like is the generator is, or there's like a spot where the exhausts can go out. Like I'm not. Yeah, gonna... it's 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 well crafted to the kill, wall kill on just inside, wall. and it 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 exhausts out. Okay, so um, there's a generator. If we get the lights back on, we can fight back these creatures. Good thinking, Kiefer. And uh, I, I. What's the fastest way to the? 
the cellar. Uh, it would be out the sliding doors, and then to your left, there's the cellar door. And there's a creature in the sliding door? Uh, you saw it walk by. I charge out the <laughs> sliding door, and I, um, what could go wrong? And <laughs> I charge into immediate danger. <laughs> Wait, can I, can I help him? Can I come with, I was gonna say, with my can I... flashing light? Uh, uh, Mr. Windermere. Sure. <laughs> I'm coming with you. I'm, I'm, I'm already gone. Uh, as you. <laughs> oh God. And I, 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 I'm, I still have my rifle. I'm reloading. I'm in the process of trying to reload it again. As you step out the door, a creature jumps at you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what do you, what do you do? I, I attempt to fight it off with the butt of my gun. All right, give me a kick some ass roll. That's not going to do much harm, but we'll see. Um, I get a uh, a nine. I get a nine. All right. Um, you hit it with the butt of its gun, and it makes it angry. And it actually grabs you, and it knocks you over. And you ah. fall onto your back. Your gun goes spinning across the deck. And it drags you out of view of the other two. And as it does, <laughs> it bites into your uh, your shoulder, doing two harm. Yikes. I'm going to reduce it by one. All right. Well, actually, one of my level ups, I took invincible. I am invincible. So he bites into my... my your padded my... shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and it's made of like a uh, a very rare leather from the Netherlands, um, which nether which, leather, which just nether leather, uh, <laughs> and it and it absorbs the bite. All right, you take. He gets all leather, just a leathery shoulder. Yeah, it's latched onto Ooh. your coat, trying to bite through the nether leather. <laughs> Get off me, you fiend! And. Um, I'm going to attempt to crawl away from the creature back towards my gun. Uh, give me an act under pressure roll. Can I help him? Uh, Junie bursts out the door at this moment <laughs> and uh, grabs you by the arms to try to help you. Junie, give me a help I get, out roll. Like, I get a six. All right. <laughs> so it says, I want to use the power of heart. When fighting a monster, if you help someone, you don't roll. You automatically help, although you rolled it like you rolled a 10. All right. Awesome. Um, so you grant him plus one, giving him a seven, which actually turns it from a failure into a worse outcome, <laughs> but still a success. Um, so you pull him away. With my one arm. <laughs> with your one arm. Um, but as you pull him away, you kick the gun with by accident. Like your, your foot hits the gun as you pull him off. And it actually falls off the deck and starts tumbling down the hill. Um, the monster rips off Mr. Windermere's jacket. And, hey! and it has it in its mouth and it throws it back on the ground. Mr. Windermere, you no longer have your gun. Uh-oh. I... Can I help? Uh, Keith, you burst out and see the monster gearing up to attack again. What would you like to do? Okay, I'm going to take out my silver sword, lights flashing, and I'm going to say, it's knuckle puck time! And I'm going to run towards them and be like, I couldn't right think reference? of a better Is that quote! the right reference? Yeah! All right, give me a kick some ass roll. <laughs> Son of a gun. Uh, five. Remember, you have luck points. Luck point? Good call, Joe. Yeah, I'm going to definitely Don't use forget. a luck point for that. All right. Um, so on a luck point, you have an automatic success. So would you like to take plus one forward, deal plus one harm, reduce the harm you're going to take, or force the creature where you want it? I'm going to force the creature where I want it, which is ideally letting everybody go and putting myself in between my compatriots and the monster all right i'm gonna 
I'm gonna make this. Uh, I'm gonna make this a thing. So you run at the monster, and it lunges at you. And as your blade digs into it, how much damage does your blade do? Uh, silver sword does two harm. As it digs into the creature, the silver actually seems to uh, sizzle on the creature's skin. It grabs you, and the two of you tumble off of the um, the deck as well. It's only like a few foot drop, but you land with a thud, and the creature on your blade, leaving Junie and Mr. Windermere open to do what they want to do. So this light has done nothing, eh? Uh, it seems to be annoying the creature. <laughs> it's annoying me too right now. Uh, okay. There's like this Strobe. this this strobing red light that's happening. And the creature, every time it hits the creature's eyes, it recoils a little bit. Um, okay. Okay. So it does seem to be affecting it, but not as much as the torch did. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. All right. So I'm on the floor. Is it still me or are we going to jump? Uh, Junie and Mr. Windermere, what do you do I... with this opening? I'm still dragging Mr. Windermere. And instead of dragging him through the door, I drag him to the uh, the cellar. And I say, let's get going. And, I, and I'm trying see. to scramble to, like, I'm, I'm scrambling. The two of you make it to the cellar door and flip them open. Just down the stairs, you can actually make out the generator um, with its various tubes that you can actually see the exhaust port next to the cellar door and all of that. Um, and yeah, you're open to Juniper. Head down. Save Kiefer. Look for the red light. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, start that's the. Great I'll idea. start the generator. Can I? Um, can I try to heal my arm? A li- at least a little bit, like kind of pop it back in. Uh, yeah. Are you going to use magic? Yeah. You okay. roll. Use magic. Nice. 11. All right. Um, so your arm kind of relocates magically. It, it hurts a bit. Um, I'm going to say that uh, you've taken two harm from this. You heal one and your arm is functioning again. You have full range of your arm, but you still have one harm from the injury. Okay. I'm going to go help Kiefer. And I like run up the stairs. All right. As you come to the top, Kiefer is wrestling with this creature down in the snow below. And you see, rounding the house, a second one of these creatures. Going towards them or it's, closer it's, to me? The, the one rounding the house is still several feet away. Uh, Kief is just off the deck in front of you. Okay. I... Take up my hockey stick, and in a moment of bravery, I charge at the creature using my unholy strength to kick some ass. Oh. <laughs> Say it's knuckle puck time. Which one are you attacking? <laughs> the one, the one on Keef. On Keeper. All right. Uh, Do you say so I... anything while you charge? Say it's knuckle puck time. It's knuckle puck time. Thank you. Confused. Oh. Um, so I get to use weird instead. So I awesome. roll 8, 9, 10, 11. Mm. All right. So that's for a kick some ass roll, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What what additional effect would you like? Oh, uh, uh, there is plus one forward, plus one harm, minus one harm for yourself, or force the creature where you want it. I'm going to do minus one harm for myself. All right. So harm. as you hit the creature, how much harm does your hockey stick do? Two. All right. Two, yeah. (laughs) Slashing. Two minutes for slashing. Two minutes for (laughs) slashing. Uh, So you hit the creature. It it scrapes across you with a claw, doing one harm to you. Um, But you have minus one harm, so it does zero. Uh, It it rakes across your uh, Canada Post jacket, leaving claw marks through it. Um, (laughs) As you hockey stick it, 
You hockey stick it off of Keith. The other creatures rounding the corner. The two of you only have moments before they regroup. Uh, Mr. Windermere, you're in the basement looking at a generator. Give me an act under pressure roll to get it started. Uh, give me a give me a ten. All right. Um, because I I'm gonna use my last hold to uh to take plus two forward. All right. You get it. It powers up and the lights in the estate flicker on. And as it does so, something strange happens. The, the storm seems to almost make a clearing around the radius of the light that's emanating from around the house. Amazing. And I, I quickly look around the basement in the cellar. Is there any like improvised weapon? I, I mean, first off, I'm looking for another one of my stored guns. But if there's not that, <laughs> I'll take I'll take like a uh, I don't know, like a shovel or a pickaxe or anything. What's what's down here? Um, down in the cellar. I'm looking for something, something that I can just pick up and swing <laughs> with two hands. There are several bottles of wine. Um, there is an old, very old, like, antique hunting rifle that may or may not function. Um, it's in a glass case perched up along the wall. And there is also a rusty shovel that you have never used. I grab the rusty shovel as I run back up the the stairs. Okay. The, the what um Keith and Junie, what do you two do? Um do you want to book it inside? I don't say that. Hey, do you want to book it inside? Uh <laughs> can I just like grab her and just like start running? The three yeah. of you all scramble back in uh to the estate and close the door. Things seem calm for the moment. Are the lights on? The lights are now on. Did these kids, did they bring liquor? Uh, do you ask them? No, I, I'm just looking around. Okay. I'm uh, not going to ask. There's lots. I'm going to take the biggest bottle that I can and and keep it on me. Uh, the, the, the boy, uh, Mark is looks up and he's like hey that's my bottle of vodka hey this is a silver sword with blood all over it <laughs> sorry that was rude can i borrow this please what do you need it for i have an idea of how to defeat the monsters that are trying to kill you so uh yeah sure sure go for sorry, it man i haven't uh partook in a while okay thank you um, the howls from the town below are still echoing. You can hear them. And if looking, uh, you see the girl looking out one of the windows. And with the slight clearing of the storm, the two creatures actually wander off into the woods and disappear. And the storm seems to settle up here on the mountaintop. But instead... You can barely make out the town as it looks like a swirling vortex of snow has engulfed it. Can I read a bad situation? Go for it. Um, seven? Seven and nine, you get to ask me one question. Um, are there any dangers we haven't noticed? It seems at this moment that the biggest danger is not to you guys anymore. The danger is focused on the town. It mm. appears that whatever was up here, with the power going out in the town and the power being restored up here, it has given up on trying to fight you for now and sees a much better opportunity and much more fresh people down 
in Pine Ridge below. Can I call anybody? Who do you want to call? Uh, you set me up. Uh, can I call? Set you up. <laughs> can I call the police? Um, Our sheriff is dead. Do you, is there the, you carry his gun. <laughs> is there no other force in town? Uh, you can try calling. Is he the only cop in town, though? Or is uh, there might be more, but uh, he was the one working the night shift tonight. Okay. It's a small town, and there hasn't been a problem here besides owls and drunks for 70 or so years. Who can get this message? Can I call the librarian? Uh, sure. That's uh, Felicia okay. Pinder. Felicia Pinder. Okay. <clears throat> uh, she answers her cell phone. Felicia? Uh... Keith? Hey, yeah, it's Keith. Listen, I, I just want to start off by saying I'm sorry. I, I just took out that that arm earlier. That I, I I wasn't thinking. Yeah, you weren't you weren't joking. Uh, there's something there's something happening here, Keith. Uh, yeah. Where are you? Are you okay? I'm at the Airbnb up on on the hill that has stayed up there, and we have been attacked by monsters up here. But there's something I got to tell you, and you have to try to get word out to everybody else in town. Okay. I mean, what what is it? What is it, Keith? These monsters, they don't like light. They don't like fire. So if you have a flashlight on you or if you have a torch, I know it's it's not normal to have a torch on you, but if you happen to have one, you can I know you are against this, but burn some books if you have to. You need to carry a strong light source with you, and I'm sorry, but you need to tell as many people as possible. It Keith, needs to be I... one of those situations where you tell two people, and then they tell two people, and then they tell two phone people. Phone tree. Call the phone tree. Keith, Keith, phone I, tree. I, I, Keith, I get it, but we're already trying to gather. We're getting as many people as we can. Uh, there, there's been attacks here in town. Um, we're heading to the community center. We're gonna, be, we're gonna, we're gonna hide out in there. We'll, we'll, we'll light the the fireplace. Um, I, I'm I'm with Julie right now. The she owns the local diner, Julie's. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that place. We're Great with her. Cakes. We went to we went to get Nate, but um, we don't know where he is. He wasn't at at his store. Um, we're not sure. Uh, we saw the store looks like it. The windows were smashed. Uh, somebody somebody took the the Matrix cardboard cutout and ripped it in half. No, uh, it's, no, no, Felicia. <laughs> You're kidding me. You're kidding me, Felicia. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that right now. But worse, okay, there was I'm there sorry. was blood everywhere. I don't care. Okay, no, you're right. That is worse. Okay. We're right. we're no. we're heading. Okay, good. It's safety in numbers. Just just stay together, and and make sure to have light. And we're gonna come back to you, okay? And if if you can figure out if there's a generator there, uh. That's Keith, for the best. We need to get the power back on. Keith, you're cutting out the storm. There's, Felicia, power, There's something out generator. there. There's something. What is it? And then the line goes dead. Good news, bad news. <laughs> okay. You... Uh, well, Felicia is safe for now. Uh, she is gathering people. I let her know that light and fire might deter these monsters. But they are all going to get together in the uh, the the community, community center. center. I, the um, community center. We James, you, we Sorry, overheard her, her memory loss for some reason. I don't. James know why. walks um, up to you and grabs you, and he's like, "Was she okay? Was anything happening to her?" My Matrix posters are gone, James. He shakes you, and he's like, "That's not oh, what oh, I'm oh, asking." Oh. Sorry. Sorry, yeah, no, sorry, Dude, Felicia's fine. Are you Felicia's sure? Fine. We need to get I mean, back down to that town right now. And that tram is broken. So the only other way I know off this mountain is through that old creepy mine that nobody's supposed to be using. Unless you guys have another way down. Can we ski down? I mean... Yes? We can get we down the way down? we came up. What's that? Junie? Keith, how did we get up here? Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Wink, wink, wink. There's uh, a lot okay. of us. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. 
How many people can you take at once? I'm, I that was the first time I did it. I didn't know I had an IPA. Really, it was just really? a stressful situation. I don't feel like in stressful situations very often. Mm-hmm. Can I grab I'm Juni? Wait, grab wait, Juni. wait. Look, th- this is important. These children need to be rescued. They also need to be able to survive because my Airbnb needs a five-star review from both of you. What about our friends? Juniper. I know, I know, young woman. They, your friends are important to you, but they are will they... meet us at the community center. I know, I believe it. We went out. I hope you do too. We uh, roll manipulate someone. I get a six. All right. Um, she pushes you and it's like and grabs you by the by the color of your your jacket i guess is still outside i don't know if you ever picked it up um she grabs you by the collar and like starts pointing at you and she's like my friends and i went for a walk in your woods that you said were a lovely scenic tour through a beautiful mountain range and we found a weird boarded up mine and one of my friends decided you know what'd be a fun idea let's take a look in the old creepy mine and when we did something came out and ate my friend the rest of us scattered me and mark made it back here i don't know where the rest of them are but if they're dead this is on you mr windermere you did not warn us about haunted mines you told us that it was a lovely place to stay for the weekend and i gotta tell you it has been a terrible place for the weekend and i did not even get to go skiing and there are people dead and i think that all my friends might be dead and you telling me that they're going to meet us in the community center is garbage young woman I know that I can be misleading with my descriptions on Airbnb. You what said you there was a to... functioning soda stream, and there wasn't. <laughs> Old man Bill will see to that when he is better, but this is no time to argue. If your friends are really gone, then you'll be soon to follow if you don't come with us. Well, then... I guess let's go. We probably should stay away from the mines, though, and I just would assume that a person that's lived on this earth long enough as you would just not go into creepy abandoned mines, but... <laughs> we thought we would just take a look. Fingers. Let's okay. not point fingers. The... I... Juniper, if you could... T- if you could take these to... Maybe Kiefer... James and I can slide down the hill, probably. There is a ski hill on on this hill that that you could make it down by skiing. I mean, we could all we could all I think better in numbers. I'll save my energy for when we really need it. Um, guys, I have a favor to ask though. What's that? The rest of the town doesn't know that I'm a fairy and I would really appreciate it if we kind of kept that under wraps. I don't need to freak uh-huh. people out more. Well, you Junie, uh, your oh, ears oh, are yeah. showing. They are right here. Right here. <laughs> but yes, of course, your, your secret is safe with us. Right, Mr. Windermere? <sighs> yes, Juniper. If, uh, if we survive the night, I will not tell a soul. So... How are you going to get to the community center? Uh, uh, I'm going to run outside and try to find my jacket. And I want to look for my gun. All right. As you run outside to do that, Junie, Keith, what, what's your plan? Is there is, is there skis? Or uh, like, uh, like skis. Oh, skis. skis. Um, or is there like a ski do? Mr. This Windermere gives me, has. This gives me better. <laughs> Mr. Windermere Flashbacks. has two sets of skis that were in the cellar. No ski doos. No, no ski doos. How did they get? Oh, just the tram. That's how they got off his tram. So are these yeah. are these teens just going to stay here? No, they want to. They want to come with. No, you. they no. must come with us. And 
and uh, you look, have... Kiefer, look in the kitchen. There might be some uh, uh, baking pans we can slide on. I'm going to first check my Mall Ninja equipment kit for um, a couple pairs of skis. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the short kind, though. Okay. They're the short kind. Go for it. Um, okay. One my kids learn. <laughs> and they snap on your boots. Like they just kind of slide over your boots. Things. They absolutely snap. And old Kiefer got a 13. All right. <laughs> you managed to find two more mini. They're like, they're like mini snowboards almost that you can yeah. stand on to slide down. Gnarly. So you have two sets of skis, two mini snowboards, but there are six of you. Um, I mean, the people on the skis could probably double up. They could try. Can I fly? Oh. You, could fly. you could fly. Okay. I will <laughs> fly, but I'll, like, grab onto, like, Keeper's, like, sweater coat and just, like, whee! Oh, help steer? Yeah. And then, yeah, somebody could take Mr. Windermere's suggestion and look for uh, a pan or, or a... You know, like toboggan. Is there a toboggan? Yeah, I want oh, yeah, to. I want to like a like a like I was an thinking, oven like, tray. Yeah, like like yeah. just like a regular baking sheet, and we'll just baking I'll spray sheet. some Pam on the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> they are like twice get as it, fast. Get it nice and fast, nice and speedy. <laughs> All right, who is using what? So you have a couple of uh, mini snowboards from Keith's backpack. You have two sets of skis. You have a baking pan. Uh, so that should be five. Um, who's going to use what? Um, so will... since Junie's flying, right? I'll push whoever's on the baking pan. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be on off... the baking pan. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can go on the baking pan. <laughs> okay, okay. As long as it's either you or me. And then, yeah, I'm going to take my uh, mini snowboard. All right. Uh, James grabs the other mini snowboard and the other two teens grab their skis. Um, and... Uh, you know, they were planning a ski trip. So actually, those aren't even Mr. Windermere's skis. Those are their skis. Yeah, yeah. Um, the so rest of the kids, uh, they didn't, I guess, I don't know. Their skis got destroyed when they were killed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> come to think of it, it doesn't make much sense. Oh, but hey, we're going idiots. with it. Um, yeah. uh, so, do I find my gun? Do I, or, or is it gone? Did it roll right down the hill? It's it's gone, man. It's gone. You got a rusty shovel. Okay. I, I mean, you also have the golf clubs that are still on Keith's back. Also, um, if you want to hold my hockey stick while we fly, that would be great. Also, Keith is wielding two guns right now. He has the Rangers gun. <laughs> um, All right, Mr. Windermere, and I, I toss him Rangers gun. I mean, you don't Rangers have to. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep that, and I, I seem I'm like gonna... looking for it. And I'll just be like, take this. And I'm going to use, so if, if, if Juniper's pushing me, I'm also gonna keep one of the golf clubs as like a like the putter as like a steering nice. mechanism oh, too. Oh yeah, smart. All like right. a rudder. So as you guys exit the door, um, you head towards the slopes. Now this is not like the ski lodge is actually an hour outside of town. So what you have is a skiable hill, but it's dangerous it is it's not designed for skiing <laughs> no it's it's a skiable slope that you wouldn't be able to climb but it's going to be a dangerous ride down this hill the wind is blowing you see the vortex of snow in the town below the howls are getting closer and you do hear a couple howls from the woods on the mountaintop as well those creatures that wandered off are still up here Okay, everyone, listen up. We, as soon as we leave the light of the of the chalet, we will we will be vulnerable. Run quickly, get to the edge, and head down. Children first. I suggest everybody bring a torch, and no then idea. I'm gonna lead the way like Rudolph with my red. <laughs> uh, police. And uh, perfect, Gifa. You said there was alcohol. Bottles of alcohol. I have. Yeah. Uh, well, I have, I have one, but it sounds like there's I more. I grab one more and I stuff <laughs> some sort of towel or something in it. Yes. And I say, so Mr. Greg, Mr. Hold this and 
get ready to light it on our way down if we need it. Okay, I'm gonna soak the the rag, making a uh, makeshift Molotov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys have your your Red. downhill equipment. You have two Molotov cocktails. You've got your Mine weapons. Mine isn't a Molotov. Oh no, you, yours is just a bottle of alcohol. No. Cool. No, you know how I like to <laughs> attack my enemies. Right. Um, so you guys have all of your gear. You open the front door. The wind is picking up. What happens? I uh, so and I appreciate. Yeah. I'm I'm in the front with my with my red light, and I'm like, follow me. The three of you lead the way as James and the two kids uh, follow behind. As you get to the edge of the cliff, you look, and it is one of those like it's daunting looking down this slope. It's not it's not a casual slope. You are going to be going fast, and it's as the dying. kids look over and they're like, uh. We're not professional ski. You hear the howls in the back and you can make out again as the wind picks up and the snow comes down, these two creatures coming towards you. And from the other side near the tram, another one appears. There are now three creatures heading towards you, standing at the edge of this cliff. Pizza and French fries. That's all you need to ski down this hill. And uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I push Mark. <laughs> um, oh, quickly now. Mark starts down the hill and lets out a scream as he flies forward. Um, James grabs the girl, um, whose name is Shauna, by the way. No <laughs> and he, yeah, he goes, no he, he grabs her and goes, what's your name? And she goes, uh, it's Shauna. Thanks for asking. He goes, all right, Shauna, let's go. And the two of them <laughs> jump and they start going down the hill. It's just the three of you left as the monsters come towards you. I sit cross-legged on my <laughs> oven, <laughs> my baking pan. Push me, Juniper. <laughs> <laughs> and they're flying me down the hill. Keith, it's just you as the monsters close in and get ready to lunge at you. I'm like, I was supposed to lead this thing. <laughs> and then I take out the alcohol and I... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I take out my lighter and I go... Ooh. And then I go, baby! I'm gonna <laughs> hold on. I'm gonna make you make a kick some ass roll because you are attacking the three creatures just as they get up to you. Amazing. Uh, yes, friggin' twelve natural roll. So that's a thirteen. All right. What would you like? Um, advantage on your next roll, um, or a plus one on your next roll, plus one harm, minus one harm to you, or force the creatures where you want them force the creatures where I want them, which is to back up. All right, so you breathe the fire. None of them actually get a shot on you. They all recoil in terror, and you hear screeches from the three creatures as you book it down the slope. As you all fly down this slope at tremendous speeds, um, I'm going to have you all give me an act under pressure roll. And each of you is going to dictate one of the other three as well with your roll. Uh, we'll start with Junie. Eleven. Eleven? You sword... I mean, you're you're pushing Mr. Windermere. And <laughs> as, as you're flying down, you have no problem whatsoever. You're dodging in and out of trees. Um... And it looks like uh, Shauna is also just sailing. She She's actually rocking this slope. And um, you notice the three creatures bounding down the hill after you at tremendous speeds, almost lightning fast. They're keeping up with you guys, um, mm -hmm. which is scary, but they're still a little bit behind. But as you guys gear up, um, you see Shauna pull out her own uh, bottle 
and she lights it on fire and throws it and it causes an explosion of fire back behind you the creatures move around it and she turns around and is like if anybody has any more things to light on fire use them and she books it down the hill uh mr windermere a roll please um i get a 10 all right as you book it down the hill uh you're doing fine and um james seems to be doing fine as well he's uh he's sailing down and it's mostly uh, juniper it's he looks uh, james looks back at you and he's like mr w good thinking um keith <laughs> give me a act under pressure roll right so i'm gonna use i've read about this sort of thing because i read a lot of ski graphic novels and uh, I rolled an 11. All right. So you are also flying down this hill at tremendous speeds, but you are dodging the sharp rocks, the trees. And it looks like Mark is doing all right, too. Now, as you guys are sailing down the hill, the monsters are gaining on you. One of them looks like it's catching up to you, Keith, because you're at the back. It looks... As it runs up next to you, it looks like it's about to leap towards you. What do you do? Uh, magic dagger in the eye. Do you have a magic dagger or silver sword? I have both, baby. Oh. Tell me about your magic dagger. Uh, I got it off of Amazon. No, I didn't. I got off the black market. No, it's the black web. What what film is it from? Uh, it is from a uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Um, oh, it's be a replica. And yep. yeah, it's it's a replica of um, you know like a it, you know actually it's like a fairy dagger. Um, so you might like it. You might look at it and be like, knock off. <laughs> but it's from the dark web. <clears throat> so. Uh, you know, maybe it's real. And after I met you, I, I should say after you revealed yourself, I was like, maybe this thing is real. Um, all this shot through my head in kind of like a split second as I see this thing, you know, coming down. And so I. Give me a kick some ass roll. You got it. The old dagger in the eye. What did you roll? Move. 10. Well, 9 Ten. plus 1. Awesome. Um. What would you like your extra effect to be? Plus one forward, uh, terrible harm, minus one harm, or move it where you want it? Move it where I want it, uh, which is, you know, I, I'd like to take my dagger out like just a quick, bleh, so I, I don't lose it. But then, you know, have them basically be like, oh, are you kidding me? And then it's going to fall back. <laughs> so as you stab it in the eye, it bites your hand. Uh, dealing to harm and it latches on but as your blade sinks into it it like it, it like latches onto your wrist as you, so like you're it's biting you you're stabbing it it clings to you for a second but as your blade sinks further it lets go and tumbles falling back behind your wrist is bleeding horribly and <laughs> Juniper, one of the creatures moves towards you and Mr. Windermere and looks ready to jump. What do you do? I grab my hockey stick and what I want to do is stab it in the ground so that way it hits it. All right. Uh, give me a kick some ass roll. Uh, okay, and I get, because I'm, I get to use, I guess, my unholy strength, so I get to use plus weird instead, uh, yeah. on that. Oh, it's a 10 plus 3, so 13! All right, what, what extra effect do you want? Plus one forward, uh, terrible harm, minus one harm, or force it where you want it? Um, I want to do less harm to me. All right, so as you stick the hockey stick in the ground, the creature lashes out its claws towards you. 
would be doing one harm, but instead it misses as it makes contact with the hockey stick that you stuck in the ground, and it falls behind you guys as well. The third one, coming from the other side, leaps towards Mr. Windermere. What do you do, Mr. Windermere? I I panic, uh, just like two hands swing my golf club at it, my makeshift rudder. Give me a kick some ass. Get back, you fiend! Um, ooh, yeah, nine. All right, on a nine, uh, you, how much harm does your golf club do? Uh, it does a good old two harm, and it's messy. Uh, okay. You smack the creature across the head, and Four! it, <laughs> it wow. kind of oh, flips over, taking the damage. Uh, that's going to be... Another two damage for it. And it lands on your, basically on you. And the grip oh. breaks from Junie's hands. And you go spinning. And it. Help me, Juniper. It bites into you. Ah! Now, again, with your invincibility, it's it's doing too harm and you're taking none of it. But you spin off and they sail forward as you fly off into some trees. And I'm going to need an act under pressure roll. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> um, oh, baby, these are hot dice. Probably loaded. Um, I get a 13. Ooh. You sail off down into the woods and the others lose okay. track of you. I want to try to... Um, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. I want to try to... Get back... Uh, like Almost like stop and get back hold of the... The... Baking sheet. So I want to like try to like aim towards like sort of a tree to bail and then hope but by still ha holding on to try to eject the creature okay so you're gonna try to hop off while it ejects the creature into a tree yeah i'm trying to like aim towards some awfulness all right there's some trees and sharp rocks that you're heading towards and as you do <laughs> you are flying at oh, top yeah. speed toward it the creature is wrestling with you it's trying to claw at you um <laughs> I'm going to make it another kick some ass roll as you try to throw the creature into harm's way. Ooh, I, um, I'm going to use a luck point. <laughs> All right. Nice. Good move. Um, yeah. it, f so you propel yourself. It lashes I wanna, like, out. Jam. I want to like jam my legs in at the last possible moment and try to like, like stop me, but let it keep going. So, as you do this, it sinks both of its claws and its teeth into you. This is going to be four harm. Your invincibility reduces that by two. two. So I so think two help harm. Him? Uh, he is gone. He is no. You can't even see this happening. Um, you wedge your feet into the ground. The creature flies off the baking sheet. You also, because of the speed. You f like you kind of tumble forward as well. The baking sheet flies out from under you. The monster makes direct impact with the tree. You hear a deafening thud, and it falls limply to the ground, wearing the ranger's clothes once again. Mm. This is the ranger wearing clothes one. And um, the tray flies off over the cliff and you are left in the woods well Junie Keefe and the others reach the bottom <laughs> and are at the edge of the town leaving Mr. Windermere stranded in the woods behind you he's not that far away he made it most of the way down okay. um, but he got he just you just saw him veer off and disappear into the woods with the monster as you two come to the bottom with the other three, you all gather yourselves and look towards the community center in the middle of the town where you can see a group of people 
moving. One person is ushering everybody in through the door. There's about five or six people uh, moving in there. And you can see these silhouettes and figures of creatures. There's now about eight or nine of them moving throughout the town towards the community center. And that's where we're going to take our 15 minute break. Oh, oh gosh. So, so we will be back in 15 minutes and uh, we will see how everybody is doing when we return. So stay tuned. And welcome back. We have taken our breaks. We have uh, gotten our water and recharged and are ready to fight some monsters. Um, yeah. We are jumping back in right away. So where we left off, they had just, our heroes, as we'll call them, had saved the remaining two kids from the estate up on the mountain, leaving any others who might have been lost uh, to their own devices in the woods to see what becomes of them. Uh, very likely with nine creatures now circling the town that you have, can spot, they might be among them. As you sail down the mountain slopes on your various devices of travel, whether they were pans or snowboards or skis, the three monsters up on the mountain with you chased you down. You managed to fend them off, but one of them grabbed Mr. Windermere, sending him off into the woods where you lost track of him. Junie, Keith, James, Shauna, and Mark now stand at the bottom. James pulls out his um, baseball bat with nails in it. Um, Shauna still has the old shotgun that she pulls out, and Mark still has a fire poker. And they turn to you and they say, Junie and Keith, all right, what's next? Wait, where's, where's Mr. Windermere? He got hit off by one of those creatures and I, I didn't see where he went. I lost track of him. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to take off my beacon. Ow, 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 ow. I'm going to put it on the ground. I'm like, hopefully he'll see the beacon, and at least that'll help him guide towards town. So the rest of the people are going to the community center. I think we should stop by the video store, check out my mall ninja library, and stock up on supplies before we go to the community center and help people out. I think we need something that's going to help us against these monsters. I, 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 okay. Armor up montage, armor up montage, armor up montage. The kids gather behind you and you start walking stealthily towards the town. The wind is picked up. There is a steady stream of snow that makes it difficult to see very far in front of you. And th again, in the whiteout conditions through glimpses that you catch you guys know when you're like in a snowstorm and like sometimes they'll just be like a brief second where you're like oh i can see across the street and then you're like oh now i can't oh i can see like two streets down nope now i can't it's mm -hmm. in those brief moments you catch glimpses of these creatures stalking the streets looking for survivors who they are going to try to pick off there are more of them than you expected. And as you move through the streets, you come to uh, the street leading up to the video store and you press up against an old fence and you see two of the creatures in the street around the corner from you. As you creep up there, we cut to the woods. The woods are dark and lovely. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. And Mr. Windermere, you are alone in the woods. It's hard to see anything, but through the trees, you catch a slight glimpse of a flickering red light. 
keeper, old chap. I'm coming. <laughs> and I and I start doing that like the big leaps down like a like a really steep hill where you're sort of falling running. <laughs> uh, give me an act under pressure roll. <laughs> I get a seven. Um, <laughs> you slip and start to tumble down the hill, <laughs> and as you're tumbling down you see a tree approaching how do you oh! react <laughs> i uh i'm going to try to push off in front of me with my golf club i'm going to try to like direct my fall <laughs> to uh, one side of the tree or the other give me another act under pressure roll uh i get a seven again um you push off and you still you you manage to dodge the tree and go through a group of shrubs, um, and in the process you lose your golf club. Oh no, no my my trusty putter! And, uh, uh, I damn shrubberies! And you keep rolling, and actually, um, yeah, you you got your jacket back, which is nice. But now it, now it's all scraped up. You're all scraped up. Um, and I'm pretty hurt too. Yeah, you've monster. you've taken two damage, right? Mm -hmm. Total. Um, you keep tumbling down the hill until you finally catch yourself, and you can see the red flickering light um, just through some trees. But as you're nearing it, you hear another howl, not facing you, but you actually stopping in your tracks near where the red flickering light is. You think you see something moving towards it. I, uh, I'm... I'll get you, you foul creature, and I charge after it. Uh, I use, what could go wrong? <laughs> uh, and, I, and I <laughs> pull out my, my makeshift Molotov cocktail. All right. Nice. As you burst forth from the trees, you see one of these creatures peering at this this light that is sitting on the ground where Keith left it. Um, and as you burst forth and yell, it turns and looks at you and hisses. Oh, yeah. And you still do have a rusty shovel, but you have your Molotov cocktail and your rusty shovel. So you're not without a weapon. I, I No, I think I left my shovel for the golf club. But I oh, do fair, have fair. my revolver. I have cool. a revolver that... Uh... Um, the creature gives up on the spinning red light and starts bounding towards you. How about a taste of this? And uh, it's a vintage... Nice. ...of death. Nice. <laughs> light it, and I huck <laughs> it right it. at the creature. Uh, give me a kick some ass roll. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I get a nine. All right, um... The Molotov cocktail makes contact with the creature just as it pounces towards you. Its claws dig into you as it bursts into flames. Uh -huh. So it's burning <laughs> and attacking you, which I'm actually going to let it do one additional harm, making it three harm, which puts you at three harm. But oh, I'm going to reduce with one of my hold twos. I'm my hold my one of my holds. I'm going to reduce the harm I suffer. So I I. As I take the hit, I I sort of push off the creature. Uh, I I pick up a bunch of snow and I douse yeah. my flaming arm as I push it off. How many more holds do you have? Uh, one more. Okay. Just after just I charge it. in, after I charge <laughs> when I charge into immediate danger, I can hold two. Right. Cool. Um, man, what a good ability. So, yeah. <laughs> so you um you take no harm. And the creature bursts into flames. We're going to say that that does four harm to it. And it Ooh. screams and is rolling on the ground trying to put the fire out. But as it screams, you hear more howls from various directions. What do you do, Mr. Windermere? I reach into my jacket and I pull up my gun. And I aim at the creature on the ground and I say... As the man in that movie said, dodge this. <laughs> uh, give and me I... another kick some ass roll. 
Shoot it. Um, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna use a, a luck point. All right. Um, what do you want to do? More harm? I'm, I'm take gonna less. use my last my my last hold to inflict an extra harm too. All right. So that's inflicting one. And are you also using your ten plus? <laughs> yeah, to yeah. So you. So and how much damage does the um revolver the revolver's do? Two, Mitch. Right, I think it's three. Three, so five harm. Oh, it's, a, it's a magnum, I believe. Yeah. So Three. you, as it lunges out at you, it again, its claws attempt to dig into you, but they only do two harm. Uh, so it grabs you and you say, dodge this and put the gun right to its face <laughs> and shoot it and blow its head off. Amazing. And it falls, slumps dead to the ground. The screaming stops and the howls lower and the wind picks up as mr windermere you look out into the snowy town we cut back to keith and juni there are two creatures just around the corner from you uh they seem to be feasting on something or someone in the middle of the road their backs are turned to you right now in order to get to the video store you will have to cross this street You'll either have to do it quietly or confront the creatures. Can we get an idea? one other thing? Okay. What if? Idea? Do you have any like gla any bottle? Do you still have a bottle? I still have a bottle. Yeah. Okay. What if we make a noise on the other side, and then we go behind? Okay. I I'm not gonna waste any of this. No. I'm not. This. Is you want some? No. <laughs> I can't. Help you. Keith, a little bit too much. I did a you, little swirly swirl. You down the bottle of what was it? Well, I, don't know, I don't know, but it is some liquor. So uh, maybe I'll just take a swig, and, and, and you know, if you all it around, me, take a swig. Yeah, I got like you want some? So we got to take a little bit. But then, like, you know, I think what I'm gonna do is, um, yeah, screw it. I'll pass it around. Blah blah. Let people have a little liquid courage, warm themselves up a little bit, and then I will chuck it um, to the other side, like past them, to hopefully make them think somebody is ahead of them as opposed to behind them. Um, give me an act under pressure roll. Amazing. So that. And come is... on, can I help him out? Yeah, give me a help out roll. All right. Well, it's a good thing I've read about this sort of thing in my uh, alcohol bottle throwing instruction manual. Isn't there like a video game like where, you know, you distract people by throwing stuff? Ten. I got a ten. There's a video game and they made a movie from the video game. The and... movie wasn't as good, but I learned <laughs> a lot from it. Um, Keith, you get a plus one from Junie helping out. Terrific. So with my plus two, I rolled an, a nine. Mm -hmm. I get plus two with my sharp, so that's 11, plus one with the help is 12. Hey. All right. Um, so you throw the bottle. It goes clear over the creature's heads and smashes behind them. They both look up and scurry off into the, the blizzard. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, 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 go. You make it to the video store, and just as you get in, another creature slinks onto the street nearby but it doesn't see you. It's just looking around. Kiefer, can I, um, can I, can I come in? I can come in, right? Of course you can come in. What are okay, you talking about? Yeah, you're always welcome. I think you forget that. You, you always put, ask um, that. You've been in here like a million times, but you always ask that, but that's fine. You put the sigils on the, remember I'm an elf and magic. It's all making sense now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Or fairy, I'm anyway, not yes, an elf, you can fairy. Come all right, come, come, come back here, come back here. And I show them my back area. You open, I... yeah, the back area of the video Wait. shop. It's just a door, but I, I kind of just like have this piece of paper with numbers on. It. I go beep boop, beep boop, boop, and I literally make those sounds. And then I open up the door. I go, I go, welcome to my office. James looks in and goes, whoa. <laughs> That's the appropriate right. reaction. What does your back room look like? 
So my back room is my uh, haven. And in my haven, I have protection spells. So no monster can enter. It also has an infirmary. So uh, we can heal ourselves. And it also has an armory Ooh. full of my mall ninja stuff that I've gotten from all websites. Some from wish.com, some from Amazon, a lot of stuff from the dark web. And uh, so I tell everybody, help yourself to anything you want. Um, it is all inventoried. So I will know <laughs> and I will, you know, ask for some money later perhaps because <laughs> stuff isn't free, but heal yourselves and armor up. Um, James throws his bat down and grabs, um, what, what sort of weapons do you have in the armory? Uh, well, we have, uh, we have Sting, um, from Lord of the Rings. We have, uh, the, the Staff of Magic, the White Wizard Staff, Gandalf's. We Is it all Lord of the Rings? Axe. There's a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff. Um, but there's a lot of, also a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff. Literally, the big like, sword from Final Fantasy too. So absolutely, we have uh, you know like some other blade um, weapons, like you know how blade has those like throwing star things. We have those. There's a flame thrower. There's a rocket oh, launcher. Could, do you have, don't you have Wolverine's claws that of like can attach onto your hands? <laughs> James grabs Wolverine's claws. <laughs> and straps them on and it's like choice, all right good um mark sets aside his um his fire poker and pulls out the uh replica gun that ripley used in alien and he <laughs> he looks at it and then realizes that it's doesn't actually fire anything because it's uh not Fire's a real nerf. gun nerf um <laughs> and he puts it back and he takes sting from lord of the rings and uh, Shauna, uh, who has a shotgun, puts the shotgun on her back and is like, I'm still going to use that. But she takes Cloud Sword from Final Fantasy. Brilliant. What do you grab? I'm going to heal myself first. Um, mm -hmm. I have three harm. Uh, how much can I heal myself in the infirmary? Same. Uh, um. I think given enough time, if you, how much time do you want to spend? If you want to spend a few hours, I'll say you can go up to full health. If you want to spend just one hour, I'll say you can heal one harm. Oh, man. Um, I want to do that. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah, of course, Junie. You can help yourself. Like, how much time do you want to spend here, Junie? Oh, well, I mean, things are swirling oh, outside, so we should probably help the people of this town. You know, so, if there's no people left in this town, I can't really up the joy percentage and do my job. And the Winter Queen's really going to be happy with me that I don't do that. So, should we play a quick game first or something? Get everybody's spirits up? Do we not as, have time for that? Bad as suggestion? Keith says that, we cut back to Mr. Windermere out in the streets of town by himself in the blizzard. Where are you headed, Mr. Windermere? Uh, I'm going to look around. Um, do I see the community center? You see the community center. It looks like they've just shut the doors there. I I start heading towards the community center, but I want to use uh, oops. I want to stumble across something important. Um, it might not necessarily be related to my immediate problem. It doesn't have to be. Um, As I'm walking towards the, hmm. the community center. You find um, it looks like somebody, as they were leaving their house, tried to take a bunch of stuff with them, but dropped some of it as they were fleeing. And it's lying here on the ground. It's it's a backpack. Somebody left their backpack here in front of you. I grab it and I and I keep pace. All right. Um, the backpack is quite heavy I, and, I look inside real quick uh it is filled with flashlights candles mm. a box of matches um some newspapers and um a game boy advanced 
amazing. <laughs> um, I I don't have my phone on me. I think I forget who I've. Who has my phone? Charlotte's no. Charlotte's dead. Did I give it to that Juniper woman? <laughs> I I'm pretty sure Juniper <laughs> has my phone. I have no way of contacting them. They're probably in the community center. Um, that's where we said we would rally. And I I I run to the. I I start to run towards the community center towards the doors. As you yell this out to your own <laughs> monologue, and turn the corner. You don't even get a kick some ass roll. A monster uh -oh. jumps and tackles you to the ground and bites you. Uh -oh. um, uh. Still only doing two harm. I'm and, wrestling. I'm wrestling with it. I've got the backpack. I was just looking at it. So like the backpack. The backpack's like between you two. Uh. And But as it lets out a, a, a howl and you hear more howls converging on your point. Um, you see in the snow two more creatures coming towards you. Junie, Keith, how's it going in the um, in the infirmary? So, uh -oh. I guess I've healed one. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't imagine we'd spend too much time here. So I'm going to heal one. Um, I'm going to grab from my armory and stick into my, my backpack. Um, and tell me what's like a no. You know, I'm just going to list stuff. Some flares some dynamite my flamethrower <laughs> you have a flamethrower in the infirmary you have one flamethrower uh -huh. uh, it's a flamethrower so it's already there the dynamite and the flares i'm gonna make you roll for from your bag copy okay uh and that is i think with the expert too it says that um you roll weird, and on a 10, you have it. On a 7 and 9, you have it, but only the minimum. And on a miss, you've got the wrong thing. For preparedness? No, for armory. For oh. your oh. for your haven. Right, oh, so you can right. check to see if there's yeah, you a flamethrower. Roll, check to, check, check ah. for your... Go grab your flamethrower. Oh, yeah, I do roll Okay, weird. so I'm going to need three rolls. I'm going to need an armory roll oh, for the flamethrower. I'm going to need... Uh, preparedness roll for the flares uh, actually let's make all three of them uh armory rolls because you're in your armory okay um so i'm gonna roll for the flares first cool okay i rolled a five there are no flares son of a must have used those last winter you had a flare party last last week <laughs> um you, you were have light fireworks and <laughs> keith it was racing on my step it was by yourself. You were Dude, out by the was... dumpsters smoking, and you thought, hey, man, I got a box of flares. So you went in, you lit I'm them, and you were just... I'm never going to use these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's where the that flares went. techno music. <laughs> Flashback to <laughs> Keith last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll for <laughs> the uh, dynamite. The dynamite, I rolled a six. Uh, that same night, you lit dynamite, and we're throwing it... <laughs> around ah! blowing things up uh ranger roger ended up having to come give you a talking to after you blew up one of the dumpsters roll for the flamethrower come on for the oh god luck points you have I a luck, luck point on this flamethrower yeah and i i'm like where is it the where Oh, that yeah. same night, you had gone out with the flamethrower, and then you heard Ranger Roger pull up, and you threw it back and covered it in a blanket. So you remember where it is, you uncover it, there's your flamethrower. This is the replica flamethrower from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The one that Leonardo Ooh. DiCaprio actually wore in the movie. Nice. Whoa. And I put it on, and I kind of have it right here, and I have my other backpack full of other stuff. And I've healed one. And I've healed one. I actually I go over to your wall and there's all these like sharp like things. And all I see is another hockey stick that's a replica <laughs> from the Mighty Ducks movie. And I'm yes. like, yes. 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 But it's the goalie stick. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Now with a goalie stick in hand, with a flamethrower and with everybody geared up, it's you guys are good to go. Um, are you ready to go, or is there anything else you'd like to do in your secret hideout? I turn to Kiefer and I say, let's go cause a major kerfuffle. <laughs> let's kerfuff this mother up. Yes. Then I do my cool walk for like two steps, and I'm like, oh, I gotta open the door. You all burst out onto the streets, geared to the nines. You have giant swords, wolverine claws on James the Jim Bro. Yeah, <laughs> Shauna has a shotgun and cloud sword. She kicks the door open. Uh, James runs out and yells into the night with his wolverine claws. Um, Be quiet. Mark. <laughs> Uh, what did Mark grab? Mark grabbed the, um, oh, Sting. He has Sting. Um, it's not glowing blue, but he makes sounds as if it was. He's going, woo, 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 woo. And you come out, Keith, with your flamethrower. It's, there's that, the, the torch lit on the end. And out last is Junie carrying a goalie stick, uh, fluttering out. We cut to Mr. Windermere. Help! <laughs> I'm Two more monsters. Get back, you fiend! Two more monsters are converging on him. They jump onto Mr. Windermere. Mr. Oh. Windermere, I'm going to make you make a kick some ass roll um, oh as you try to fend off three of these monsters. Oh, no. Um, I get a uh, eight. All right. With an eight. So... The one that is on top of you is going to try to do two harm to you. But you have invincible, so it doesn't hurt you. <laughs> the other two pile That's on, though, leather. and mm. do an additional very delicious one thing. harm to you. On top of the two, so that one goes through. So okay, out of so the three monsters are now on you trying to eat you. They you're, you're fen you're, The backpack's okay. over your head. I use a luck point to um, to nullify all the harm. Okay. I'm down. I'm down. I've used four luck points now. All right. You nullify the harm. Oh, um, I, one thing I should mention is that anytime I spend a luck point, you'll find something weird, but maybe even useful. So I reach into the backpack and I pull out the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> and I shove the cartridge into the creature's face Blow and I turn this. the brightness up to full <laughs> nice. it gets stuck <laughs> in its teeth and it falls back trying to pry it from its mouth and it starts um, it turns on and you start hearing do 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 and um, as the sound happens they all get confused, giving you a brief moment. I... I want to take the... <laughs> okay. In a, in a last desperate... Because I'm, at, I'm at, my, at, my, at, my, at my end here. Um, I take... Reach and I grab the pack of matches, like one of the big boxes of matches. And I take like seven or eight matches in one hand and I light them all and I just jam it back into the matchbox and I put it back into the bag and I throw it at the creatures and run. Ooh. <laughs> I don't it, know what was it. I forget all the things that were in it. but It lands in the middle of the creatures and bursts into flames <laughs> and almost like like bits of, of, of uh, newspaper and various other candles. There was there was yeah it's just. Was there some flares in there? Was there flares? You know oh, what? No. It explodes. You don't know what exactly was in it. It's not a huge explosion, but it just goes. Pff. And all of the creatures, you throw it right into the middle of them with the Game Boy Advance doing its little music. And it blows up and all three of the creatures scream and you see them catch on fire and they run screaming into the night. And the I community. scramble. I scramble into to try to get into the community center banging on the nearest door you make window. it to the door of the community center and are banging keith junie you round the corner to also set your eyes on the community center and as you do mr windermere doesn't notice you see him banging on the door 
You see Help! somebody open the door or open the window, look out, see Mr. Windermere, look behind him, shake their head and close the door <laughs> as the swirling uh, vortex of snow appears again behind Mr. Windermere and this creature emerges from it standing about 10 feet tall antlers on its head and it kind of starts like leaning down and towards Mr. Windermere silent as the night only the sound of blowing wind Mr. Windermere as you're banging you feel a cold chill run down your spine as Junie, Keefe, and the rest, you see the Windigo about to attack Mr. Windermere. Wait, can I go? I can't actually do this, but I'm going to go. <laughs> and that, I'm going to say, hey, 10 point. And instead of buck, I'm going to say the F word. <laughs> uh, give me a manipulate someone roll for the monster. Terrific. And manipulate is charm, which is not great for old Keith. Can I help him? You can. What do you say to, to help get the monster's attention? And I say, Listen! The White Queen! The Winter Queen is going to come kick your butt! It, yeah, so roll help out to see. And, and, uh, uh, Keith, you're going to give me a manipulate someone and we'll see if uh, Junie helps. Oh, uh, 11. All right. That's going to be a plus one Which, on your roll. Unfortunately, gets me to seven at least. So I, it's a seven. A seven is better than lower than a seven. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so the creature is going to do it but only if you do something for it right now to show you mean it. So in this case, the monster kind of glances back at you, but is too excited to uh, have a prime opportunity as it reaches its giant claw out towards Mr. Windermere. So what it's you my job. What are you going to do? Make it? I'm going to turn around, pull down my pants, Slap my butt, take out my lighter, let one rip, and create this little gas thing that will hopefully be like, how dare you do that in my direction? And then oh, people will be looking at me. I'm like, I panicked, okay? I panicked. You have you, a flamethrower. You have a flamethrower. I look at my flamethrower and I go, nope, this was a good idea. This is a good idea. Because it was so, supposed to offend it. So let me get this straight. This, this giant, horrible monster that's about to kill Mr. Windermere uh, doesn't want to pay attention to you, and your response is to Blue Angel. It's in its direction. <laughs> in its direction. But I slap my booty first to get his attention. It's you know, attention. Mm, it is mm. a metaphorical slap in the face. The creature turns, and with one step clears the distance towards you and with its hand backhands you my butt across the butt and you oh. you go flying uh you take you take hold on let me just check my notes here um you take two harm and you go through a nearby fence Pants down. But you manage to distract the creature from Mr. Windermere, who now turns around and sees it. Oh, crap. Mr. Windermere, what do you do? You just saw uh, Keith get flung about 15 feet through a fence. I, uh, I, shoot her! <laughs> you, 
Uh, and <laughs> and I I pull out my gun and take aim, take aim, fellow hunters. Give we me, must kill it. Give me a kick some ass roll. And uh, I get it. I get a ten. Um, what is the extra effect you would like? Uh, I'm gonna add uh, plus one harm. All right. Um, you fire the gun. Like and into it, its back. And the bullet hits it and goes in and then kind of pushes itself out. It looks like you hurt it, but not very much. And it turns to face you. And uh -oh. it and it um as it turns back around after getting shot, it throws out its hand and the storm that's forming around it coalesces and shards of ice fire towards you uh, and hit you dealing too harm apparently making contact <laughs> with your jacket I, I I I kind of like turn over and 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 um, go into like the the fetal position. It, it kind of like you get pelted with all this ice and you kind of reel back from it. Junie, what are you doing? So I realized that Kiefer's been hit, Mr. Windermere's getting down, and I just like, I'm starting to get angry. And I want to use my magic to flame. But before I do, I yell at Mr. Windermere and I say, Mr. Windermere, you're most happy joyful thoughts and i think of my bank account and how <laughs> how how tremendous how many zeros and commas are in mm -hmm. even just one of them wonderful uh, i want to try to flame at man give me at um give me a use magic roll let's see 10 yeah. All right. The magic works without issue. Um, you, like a flamethrower, start burning the, the windigo, and it screams. The wind picks up around it. The howl echoes through as, as the fire seems to do double damage to it. Um, yeah. And so it, it reels back and starts clawing at the area that you burned in horror. Um, can I book it over to Mr. Windermere? Yeah. Um, give me an act under pressure roll. Because you're booking it past the Windigo. Yeah. Ten. All Eight right. You managed to dodge past a wide swing from the Windigo um, as it tries to attack you. And so I'm just going to write down here. There we go. Um, and you make it to Mr. Windermere. Are you Juniper, okay, Mr. Windermere? You saved me. Listen, I, I, I got a, a burst of energy from you thinking joyous thoughts. It was fantastic. I don't think that's going to be enough to, to beat this thing. We must help Kiefer. He the, fell on his kefir. The, <laughs> the 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 creature, the creature starts walking over towards where Keith is lying dazed on the ground. But as it does, um, Mark, Shauna, and James all jump into action and start attacking the creature. They manage to deal an additional two harm to it as uh, Shauna cuts it through with the uh, the clouds uh, blade and uh, James jumps on it and starts piercing it with his claws Amazing. and um, fantastic and uh, uh, yeah Mark uh, Mark takes sting and just starts like shanking it with sting um, Junie roll me roll me a d d6 just uh, one d6 and tell me what you get oh I only have two Oh, okay. Roll two d six and tell me what you get. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I got a two. 
<laughs> All right. So um, that's going to be Shauna uh, gets picked up by the Windigo and thrown. And she goes <laughs> flying. Um, she lands somewhere off in the distance in like a yard. And you don't hear anything else after that. Um, and then the Windermere goes to attack James, who's on his on his like side, stabbing him with uh, the Windigo. Yeah, it goes to attack uh, James. Um, that poor girl. We never even got to know her name. <laughs> we certainly didn't ask. <laughs> I like to keep a professional distance. <laughs> Oh, um, I wish I could have at least brought some joy to her before her. James <laughs> screams, a little help. Uh, Keith, you're on the ground. You kind of come to and you see the monster trying to bear down towards you, but these two kids are stabbing at it. Kids, scram. Papa's got a date with destiny. Uh, James and Mark both vacate the area. And then even though it doesn't like need cocking, I go with the flamethrower. And I say, let's die. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. I couldn't think of something. Well, you can't make me think of movie quotes anymore. How could you do this to me? Hasta la vista. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. I um, that. Give me a kick some ass roll. You have luck points. I use a luck point. <laughs> All right. I literally rolled a one and a one. So I'm going to use a luck point. Just so everybody knows how bad that was. Um. All right, so that well, means get that points. you get to choose an extra effect. Uh, one going forward, inflict terrible harm, suffer less harm, or force it where you want it. I'm going to inflict terrible harm. The flamethrower goes right in the Windigo's face. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm also going to use um, Precise Strike, which give might me, just be his face anyway. Give me a roll. Give me a roll. Okay, uh, Precise Strike uses tough. Yes, 11. All right, so what? Nice. You, tell me what happens on an 11. Uh, 10 plus. Okay. Um, it, it does ignite its face, but then I'm going to just go down and, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sp- just like draw a middle finger with, with the flamethrower? With I, the flamethrower. And it adds plus two harm. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what you mean. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, I love that you drew a middle finger with a flamethrower, but... Yes, yeah. precise strike on a 10 plus does inflict two harm. All plus right, harm. so your regular damage plus one harm from your luck point plus two harm. So that's going to be... And, and what's the flamethrower do? I'm gonna say it does. Uh, it does four harm. Ooh! So light it up. That's gonna be seven, right? Yeah. 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 Four plus two plus one. Oh baby! All right. Um, the creature reels back from you, and it, so it also gets a chance to attack. When you kick some ass, you both do stuff to each other. So it grabs you, Keef, and it throws you back, um, dealing three harm. Oh, no. Oh, God. And you land on the tank of the flamethrower and it punctures it and it starts going and it sounds like it's going to blow but before you get to do anything mr windermere and juni what do you do you're all you're you're not even keith's pretty far away from you the windermere is between you guys and him mr windermere i i think with enough joy from this town 
we can send this thing back to where it came from, but I, I need everyone's help. And Kelly, let me know if we can do this. But I want to concentrate on doing some big magic. But I think I need the town's help, and it might take some time. Juniper, do you think you can banish this awful creature to whence it came? Not with the joy at 1.5% like it is right now. I burst into the community center. I, I, I try to kick the door in. Um, sure, yeah. You kick the door down, and they were just trying to board it up. And they're like, Mr. Windermere, no, there's a monster out there. Everybody has free rent for the next six months. <laughs> Mr. Windermere, we're all going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and... and... <laughs> I have, I've, I've exhausted all of my options, <laughs> um, uh, and I will pay for your child's education. What do you want from us, Mr. Windermere? I want you to be happy, damn it! <laughs> uh, roll manipulate someone, and this is going to be for... There's like 10 people huddled in the community center, terrified, as you burst in to tell them they all have free rent and other things. Uh, give me a manipulate someone roll. Um, and uh, I use a luck point. <laughs> all right. So... I have two luck points left. Um, um, yes, Keith. Can I help with the happiness? Yeah, what are you going to do? It might be kind of sad, but um, I... Don't do it! <laughs> ...have completely filled up my harm. So, I think... Wait, I'm you've dead. taken... You've taken... I've taken every single harm. I only healed once back at the thing. I had three. It went down to two. Since then, I think I've taken four damage. You but could have done a, a luck point if you wanted to, but no, no, no. Basically, I am lying there. And like as the chemicals rush to my brain, <laughs> as I'm friggin' dying, I'm thinking I finally got the adventure that I've been watching in all these movies and I got to save people and my my helping save the day you know I, I was a part of it and it I I smile and I freaking I'm I'm done the Wendigo picks Keith up. He's bloody. His, he's losing vision. And the Wendigo goes to bite down on him, not realizing the ruptured tank on his back. And as Keith looks up at him and smiles, knowing what's about to happen, Keith, what do you say to the Wendigo? See you in the after and suddenly there is an explosion Keith blows up in the yeah. Wendigo's face <laughs> and the Wendigo falls over landing on its back as the town comes out and sees this and they all gather round uh, looking in horror Junie, you have a moment here. The town's gathered. What do you do? I... Are they sad? Are they happy? I mean, they just saw a guy blow up and there's a horrible monster attacking them, but uh, you have a moment here to turn this around. Unless Mr. Windermere... They also have some great... They, they are they, they, they can forget about money for a little bit, you know, it's like a little they, stimulus package. <laughs> they feel this like idea that there's something that needs to be done with joy. So um one of them you know I yeah. turn around to them and I yeah. say Because of Kiefer, you're all going to live. Let's not let him and his death go in vain. Rejoice! Celebrate! Give me your joy! Um, 
We did it! Uh, Julie from the diner stands up and goes, Keith was always one of my best customers. He came by every afternoon and ordered ordered a dozen muffins. I loved Keith. And um, Felicia, Felicia steps forward from the library and it's like, Keith and I used to hang out by the dumpsters smoking all day, and it was great. He was such a nice guy. One time, he showed me that he, his his collection of swords, and it was weird, but he seemed pretty cool. Um, James, with his Wolverine claws, steps forward and is like, you know, I, Keith never came by the gym. He wasn't much of a bro, but he was a cool dude, and I just saw him snowboard down a mountain fighting monsters. And I gotta say... There ain't nobody cooler than that. Um, Mr. Windermere, do you want to add anything? Old. I knew him for a short time. But it was memorable. He was one of the bravest men I've ever seen. And a loyal worker. Never once complained. And this town will... Well, it'll miss him. As you finish... Your golf bag lands with a thud burning at your feet. Charlotte's hand <laughs> rolling out of it. <laughs> and and the, 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 as the Windigo starts to gather itself and stand up, it looks at you and it lets out a howl as it moves towards the townsfolk. And all the townsfolk keep chanting, Keef, 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 Junie. Keith. Big magic. What does it look like? I reach my hands out in front of the town folk, letting them fuel, you know, with their joy and their happiness and their love for Kiefer. And I, a portal appears behind the Windigo, edged in flame. And I say, go back. You shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As, <laughs> as you yell, you shall not pass. The creature starts getting sucked back into the vortex. One of the people turns one of like, um, let's see. Um, old Bill hobbles up <laughs> chanting Keith and he looks and he's like, how is she doing that? And as you're doing this, you lift into the air, your wings appearing behind you. Your hat falls off. Everybody can see your, uh, yeah, your ears. <laughs> <laughs> whatever um, your your pointed ears as you float above uh focusing as this this warm fiery orange energy comes out of your hands creating this portal that sucks the wind to go back into it and closes and you come to rest back on the ground in front of the town all of them looking in shock at you junie <clears throat> Well, uh... Can I just say that our postal workers do go way above and beyond, <laughs> especially in these winter mm. times. Am I right? Thank you, Mr. Windermere. Yeah. And I mean, I hope you all are satisfied with our service. Please fill out your survey that you'll receive in the mail uh, to let us know how we did. <laughs> Appreciate it. As you say that, you notice something strange. Behind the crowd, as, as the dust settles on the town... Um, uh, you notice Fidget standing in the door to the community center, shaking his head. And he's just looking at you and he looks down at his non-existent watch and he gives you one of these. And the town starts, starts rejoicing at the fact that the monster is gone. And, and as they rejoice... The storm seems to settle, and you can see sunrise off in the distance, just cresting the mountains. Any final words to the townsfolk? Mr. Windermere, Junie? I, uh, I imagine as, as the, the crowd sort of disperses and people start to pick up the pieces, I'm, I walk off with juniper are you okay 
Are you okay, Juniper? What um, you did there was pretty amazing. I'm really tired um, and really sad because my best friend just uh, sacrificed himself. Oh, jeez. Gosh. Um, who's going to explain movie? There is this great feature, the director's cut. <laughs> It won't, it will never replace, replace Kiefer, but he would want it that way. Mr. Widemir, as you finish talking, Juniper's not there anymore. (laughs) She's just vanished. I've taken many blows to the head. (laughs) This must be a side effect. Juniper. You find yourself standing in a beautiful, ornate room with large pillars and a great carpet. Um, And the carpet is this blood red carpet that fills up a large pathway up a, a set of ice steps to a throne that almost seems like it has a cloud above it that is constantly snowing. The room that you're in is made entirely of ice. And standing next to the throne is Fidget. And he's looking kind of nervous. Sitting in the throne is a very tall woman. She's about eight feet tall. She's wearing a beautiful white dress that flows out into the red carpet and the end of the dress almost looks like a snowbank, like it's almost like spreading snow. She wears a crown of ice upon her head and she sits there looking down and as she looks up, her eyes are icy blue and she looks at you And a smile spreads across her mouth. Um, Her lips also blue. Her skin very pale. Juniper. You did it. 27% joy. Now. Congratulations. Thank you. Your your winteriness. There is something that we need to discuss, though. Now, it's no big deal. You've done a terrific job. And luckily, humans are a dime a dozen. We can always find more of them. Unfortunately, despite your best efforts, you broke the golden rule. You not only revealed yourself to your friends... But to the entire town. I mean, it was only 13 of them. They're the only really? 13 left. But it's okay, Junie. We are going to send in our best winter nights. And they're going to take care of this for you. There's got to be something I can do. Anything to save them. They, they deserve to live. They survived. Junie, we're going to forgive you and we're not going to um, punish you to the cubicle. Not the cubicle. No, not the cubicle. No, you, trust me, we know. Because you managed to raise joy so well in those last minutes, despite how many people were, were brutally murdered. <laughs> I've been watching. It's been great. Um, Fighting against demonic forces. I can't. I know. What fun. There was a whole group of us. We made popcorn. It's been a treat. <laughs> but listen, we're going to have to kill everybody in that town. You can't just wipe their memories? No, that's not something we do. If they have witnessed your power, it's too powerful of a memory. Don't worry, Junie. You're going to be restationed in that town. We're just going to have to wipe it out. We're gathering our people now. Good luck and um, best wishes. And 
you appear back next to Mr. Windermere. Juniper, I was just talking to you. You need to run now. I... Why? We've the killed the monster. You've the... sent it back to whence it came. The queen is going to kill everyone. She has no power here. We are a sovereign nation. No, she literally it has... Is it, merely I a title. Power. I gave her the power by making everyone so happy. I do not understand. Maybe we need to make everyone sad? It's at that moment that we focus in on the corpse of Keith charred and lying there. And as we look at his body, his fingers twitch. And that's where we end our stream. There might be more Monster of the Week to come in the future. Oh. And we are going to continue to explore the town of Pine Ridge when we do return. Whether or not we will be playing the same characters is yet to be seen. But a new story is already beginning to unfold. One that might once again plunge the town of Pine Ridge into a dire situation. But until then, thank you all very much for joining um, our Monster of the Week session. Again, if you're unfamiliar with it, we were using the Monster of the Week uh, game system. This is a Powered by the Apocalypse system, which uses a 2d6 um, 2d6 roles where basically you ask your players for various types of roles they roll and either succeed admirably succeed kind of or fail miserably uh, you can pick this up it is by uh, evil hat productions and you can actually find a lot of free resources and a lot of other great 2d6 system games on their website so that's uh, evil hat productions monster of the week Definitely check it out. It's a game system that we really like for its uh, rules light system. A lot of role playing and storytelling gets involved. And um, I had a lot of fun. Mitch, sorry that you've died in both of our Monster of the Week stories. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's fine. Like if you if you go in an honorable and epic way, there's no problem with it. And, uh, you know, it it led to the end so it you know that's that's the most important thing i think something that i that i should note is that dying in monster of the week is much more likely than in something like in D. &D. it's yeah. quite normal for a character to die and that's why you always have to be ready for that possible thing i thought that i might kill mr windermere a few times if he had failed a few rolls Barreling I burned through, the through woods. so many luck points. If he doesn't die from getting mauled to death, he's gonna die from the doom that comes from having no yeah. luck points. He 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 is he's a ticking time bomb. Yeah, I have that invincibility. Oh, yeah, yeah, that invincibility. Oh, I had like only a couple moves that did more than uh, two harm. Um, and yeah, uh, Keith took the brunt of it, but he was an action hero, and yeah, he died an action hero. Um. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank Joe? you, Kelly, for running the game. Um, no, that was great. Really yeah. uh, a lot of fun. So I, fun. I'm a big fan of Monster of the Week, and I really enjoy the story that you're weaving here. And I, yeah, I hope we can do more in the future. Um, stay tuned. Thank you. And um, Jill, anything anything you want to talk about? Yeah, don't forget to look at our Teespring store. Uh, the link's below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Beads t-shirts. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll get a Monster of the Week t-shirt up there, but check out uh, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch for all of your faves. Thank you, Jill. And thank you once again to our special guest, Mitch. Uh, he may be joining us in the future as well for more Monster of the Week. We love having him. He's a pretty key part of this team, even if he dies every time. Always brings <laughs> yeah. us a part game. Part of the team. Part of the team. Thank uh, you. But thank Mitch, you so much. tell us again about uh, what you do and where we can find you. Yeah, like I, I was really realizing I was dropping quarter life gaming so much, quarter life gaming. But I should specify that this is a video gaming channel. 
Uh, so it's not, you know, uh, the D and D rolling dice type gaming. This is a video game channel that I run with, uh, Joe O'Gorman and, uh, Kyle from, uh, the old dungeon dudes channel. You know who I'm talking about. You know, so that's every Monday at 8 PM on Twitch quarter life gaming. We have a YouTube channel. We have an Instagram, we have a discord, uh, which you can find at quarterlifegaming.com or just go to our YouTube and subscribe. You don't have to subscribe, but it'd be nice. Uh, and then you can find all those links from there. The Discord, we have our uh, community gaming nights the last Sunday of every month. So our uh, first community gaming night of this year is this Sunday at 7 p.m. So make sure to join the Discord so you can figure out what people are going to be playing because uh, it's a good opportunity to make friends and hang out and chat with uh, fun, nice people. So thanks again for having me. Yeah, we me. hope to see you. I always have fun. And yeah, come check us out over at Quarter Life Gaming if you feel like doing stuff on Mondays. Thank you so much, Mitch. And always a thank pleasure you. to have you. Um, so for Drakenheim, we are taking next week off and we should be back. I need to check with Monty. He's been a little uh, MIA lately uh focusing very hard on his uh thesis so i get i get a few texts here and there just to let me know that he's still alive but he is working away so i'm going to be checking in with him tomorrow and uh we should be back with drakenheim not next tuesday but the tuesday after um and that that'll be sorry it's the 8th of february 8th of february, mm -hmm. 8th of february that'll be the kickoff of season three, Fate of Drakenheim, I believe. Um, so we will see you all then. And until then, happy monster hunting. Happy yeah, monster hunting. Happy New monster slogan hunting. to end the stream. Until then, happy monster hunting. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.